Welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to share David's story with you. His wife cheated on him, conspiring against him with a black man. Please subscribe to our channel before we begin the story. They say a husband is always the last to know when his wife cheats. On his 30th birthday, I discovered Lisa's affair with a black man. By then, the whole neighborhood was already aware. I didn't react impulsively. I spent a month investigating her routine. I installed monitors at home, took time off work under the guise of a business trip, and let Lisa know I was going away. She wouldn't miss this chance for an affair. The next day at noon, the lover boy showed up, a tall and strong black man in his twenties. I found it strange, how could a married woman like Lisa be attracted to such a muscular man? And why would she choose a black man, wasn't she afraid of being played, comma, they undressed swiftly. By the time I opened the feed, they were already naked. Lisa, a petite New Yorker with a lovely figure, looked distorted under the black man. I always believed Lisa was a good wife, especially since she made breakfast for me every morning. I trusted she was the kind of woman who could live a good life. But now, she was having an affair with a black man. I didn't know how they got involved, but I felt a deep sense of defeat. A rush of blood surged through my body, I wanted to run in with a knife and chop them up. But I had to restrain myself. I couldn't do something rash. They were silent and never spoke. The room echoed only with Lisa's piercing cries and the black man's ugly silhouette. I watched as though the woman was not my wife, a mix of familiarity and strangeness. Her betrayal was absolute, from flesh to soul. I retrieved the key, hesitated at the door, knowing it was the end of my marriage. I felt on the verge of collapse, trembling involuntarily, heartaching subtly. Nevertheless, I opened the door and stepped in quietly. They were engrossed and didn't notice me enter as they were unaware. Lisa faced away while the black man buckled under her view. His dark skin made Lisa's fair skin even more glaring. I saw the most unbearable scene clearly, I felt dizzy momentarily. I leaned against the doorframe, took a deep breath, then chuckled. When Lisa turned back, her expression changed from shock to despair. She lunged towards me, grabbed my leg, crying, I'm sorry. It's my fault, punish me. I love you, forgive me this time, I thought she wasn't acting, tears flowed down her face. I wanted to push her away in disgust but couldn't as she clung tightly. In a gentle tone, I said, stop, put on your clothes first, the black man fled without looking back. I smiled, not knowing what expression to wear to face the situation. My smile turned to tears. I couldn't show them my vulnerability, so I forced a smile and told him, don't worry, it's fine. She's all yours now, comma, Lisa's expression shifted from shock to surprise, then from surprise to despair. She went crazy, rushing towards me, tears streaming, crying, I'm sorry. Hit me. I love you, forgive me. I was repulsed and wanted to kick her away but her tight grip hindered my movement. I gently said, stop, put on your clothes, comma, the black man had left, not even glancing back at Lisa. I raised my hand to slap her, watching her tearful face, but eventually held back. It all seemed pointless, comma, Lisa knelt before me all night, crying. The black man had previously been her friend's lover, who later passed him on to her. Half a year ago, when I was away, Lisa's friend had sent her home with the black man, who stayed over. They ended up in bed, our bed. Ever since that incident, Lisa became addicted to the thrill of cheating. Whenever I went on business trips, they would rendezvous. Looking back now, women are indeed born actresses, especially those involved in affairs. In recent years, to earn more money, I often went on business trips. Maybe I overlooked that Lisa was a beautiful woman and appeared delicate, making it easy to attract men's attention. 
Lisa firmly refused to divorce. I told her I didn't want to sue for divorce to avoid damaging her reputation. In the end, tearfully, she signed the agreement. After the divorce, I sat in the empty living room. This was once my happy home. The house was still there, but the family was gone. My marriage ended, with the main culprits being the black man and another woman, Jenny. She was a newly married young woman who had handed her black bed companion to Lisa, causing the affair. Taking revenge on this woman was simple. I spent $50,000 to hire a fitness instructor to flirt with Jenny online. Effortlessly. He lured her to a hotel for an affair. Three nights later, I went to the Hilton Hotel, opened the slightly ajar door of room 1807, and handed the fitness instructor a bag of cash behind the door. He looked inside briefly, then left without counting the money. I entered the suite and gazed at the woman on the bed. Jenny's hands and feet were tied to the bedposts, blindfolded, with a slender figure draped in black stockings. Her skirt was hiked up to her waist, sensual, but repulsive to me. She provocatively said, Dear, hurry up, I can't wait. Sitting on the bed, I traced my fingers on her body, then patted her face forcefully. Jenny seemed to enjoy the act, writhing involuntarily, trying to suck my finger, but I held her face stiff. Slapping her twice, I removed her stockings and gagged her with them. In a husky voice, I said, no rush, we have time, let's take it slow. Jenny sensed something was amiss, struggling to break free but restrained by the ropes, whimpering weakly. I set my phone to record video and placed it on the table, capturing the bed perfectly. Then I stepped out and knocked on the door of the adjacent room, 1809. It was opened by a disheveled man, grease around his mouth, holding a chicken leg, a beggar I had brought from the street. I knew that to humiliate Jenny, having a fitness instructor sleep with her wasn't enough to hurt her. To inflict pain and agony, a beggar was the perfect choice. The beggar had no reason to refuse. I instructed him, don't say anything, just do as you're told, he understood, and followed me to room 1807. Jenny had destroyed my marriage. I intended to make her pay the price and give her an unforgettable lesson. The beggar, seeing the enticing Jenny on the bed, was practically drooling. Jenny, realizing the situation, couldn't scream with her mouth gagged. Tied up, she struggled desperately on the bed. To avoid prolonging the agony, I quickly went to the table, held up the recording phone, and signaled to the beggar. It was time to begin. The beggar pounced on Jenny as if he were insane. Jenny struggled frantically, shaking her head and making muffled sounds. However, the more she struggled, the more excited the beggar became. Jenny's mouth was gagged, only managing to make unbearable sounds from her throat, clearly against her will. I recorded for a while. I connected Jenny's phone to a prepared computer, making copies of all the data on her phone. Initially, I only sought revenge on her, but upon seeing the photos, videos, and chat records on her phone, I changed my mind. After the beggar left pleased, I closed the door and untied Jenny's bonds. Jenny went berserk, removing her blindfold and gag, tears of distress staining her once lovely face with an air of gloom. With a resentful gaze, she stared at me, clearly understanding everything. Jenny disregarded everything, crazed like a madwoman, rushed off the bed, raising her hand to slap me. David, you animal, you're a sicko. Is all this your doing? Carelessly, I reached out and grabbed her striking hand, coldly staring at her, bluntly saying, Jenny, you ruined my marriage. This isn't over, comma, with a flick of my hand, I swung her arm, flinging her away. I felt no guilt towards her. Eyeing me with venom, Jenny fiercely asked, who was that just now? Tell me, who was on top of me? Without concealing anything, I replied nonchalantly, I don't know him, just a beggar I picked off the street, 
Kama, upon hearing this, Jenny exploded instantly, pushing her to the brink of madness. Her fingers dug into her flesh as she screamed and yelled, nearing fainting. Jenny's malevolent eyes glared at me as she spat, David, I'll make you pay for what you've done. You dare treat me like this, you'll have a gruesome end, come up pulling out my phone, I've recorded everything that just happened, as seen on your phone. With numerous photos, videos, and messages displaying your promiscuity. Don't you think going public will make you infamous? Jenny turned her head upon hearing, listening intently. If your wealthy husband knew you'd slept with countless men and organized a secret affair club, what would his reaction be? I added nonchalantly. Jenny's pupils dilated instantly, realizing the implications. If only raped by a beggar, she hadn't done anything wrong. But if her messages were shared, revealing her promiscuity with numerous men, and orchestrating affairs with married individuals, she'd be a disgrace. Everything would flip, leaving Jenny with nothing, a ruined reputation and a husband ready to kick her out. Full of understanding, Jenny finally softened. Dropping the garments in her hands, she fell to her knees, tearful eyes gazing up at me, asking, what must I do for you to spare me? I answered firmly, there's no escape, you must pay the price, comma, shaking her off, I turned and left the room. As I departed, the early autumn air held a chill, darkness descending early. Seeking retribution against Jenny, a sense of warmth enveloped me. Jenny provoked me, so I intended to expose her true colors to the world. While driving home, I noticed a van closely tailing me, raising concerns. As the red lights flashed, I glanced at the rearview mirror and noticed the van tailing me closely. Attention peaked, I observed, realizing the severity of the situation. The car seemed to be blatantly tracking me? Instead of heading home, I quickly devised an alternate route in my mind. I turned the wheel, opting for the slightly congested urban traffic route. The van. Upon seeing my detour, hastened after me, staying fiercely in pursuit. Dodging through the scattered vehicular traffic, I sought to shake off the persistently tailing van. However, despite my efforts, the van clung onto me like glue, maintaining a relentless pursuit at a distance of a hundred meters. As more vehicles flocked the streets, I knew it was time to take action. Suddenly, a lengthy red light permitted a sea of cars to flood the main road from both left and right lanes, creating a gridlock. Anxiously eyeing the rearview mirror, I noticed the van stuck hundreds of meters away due to the congestion. With the yellow light flashing, I took a risk, swiftly zooming past the last vehicle before the red light appeared, reaching the alternate road seconds before the signal change. One last glance in the rearview mirror confirmed the van was trapped at the red light, left waiting helplessly. Breathing a sigh of relief, I resumed my journey homeward. Upon reaching the familiar gates of the community, my tense heart finally eased. Despite the considerable delay from the detour, I arrived home at midnight. Other than Jenny, the recent person who crossed me, those individuals were likely deployed by her for retribution. I couldn't wait, this failed attempt wasn't likely to deter them for long. It seemed like caution was essential in the coming days. Lost in thought, I reached for my keys, preparing to unlock the door. In an instant, a sharp pain erupted from my neck, rendering me momentarily stunned. My mind blank, I turned to see a menacing face approaching. As my body weakened, my head struck the cold floor. Suddenly woken by a surging chill, I weakly opened my eyes, surveying the pitch-black surroundings through a narrow slit. Bound hand and foot with ropes, I struggled against the tightly tied bonds. Awake at last. A sneering voice echoed closer. The voice was all too familiar. Emerging from the darkness, a woman approached, still wearing the black stockings, donning sky-high heels. With a sideways glance, I resigned, you just had to seek revenge. Despite the panic gripping my heart, I maintained a facade of dignity, knowing that now, 
displaying any fear would equate to defeat. Jenny stepped on my leg, gritting her teeth, you took so many photos and videos of me, how long do you think you can keep this up, comma, with a wave of her hand, two burly individuals surged forth. Let's beat him. Her command heralded a rain of punches and kicks, mixed with the occasional click-clack of high heels. The cacophony of pain stifled all words, each blow numbing my senses, rendering my body numb and unresponsive. The scene kept spinning in front of my eyes, even opening them felt like a strenuous task. Suddenly, a cold cell phone came hurtling towards my face. Fortunately, I reacted in time, dodging my head to avoid a direct hit, as my head would have been the target. My phone landed with a bang on the concrete floor as she commanded, delete the backups from your phone, comma, I mustered a sarcastic smile, but my split lip stung. How can I delete them without being freed? I icily surveyed the surroundings, cautiously trying to loosen the rope tying me down. Jenny seemed to catch my insincerity, scoffing lightly. Gesturing to her henchmen, they restrained my shoulders on either side. Still playing games? Let me tell you, no one who enters here ever leaves alive. Her words startled me, prompting a direct gaze at her aggressive demeanor. Could it be? She's committed murder? Previously known for her promiscuous affairs and illicit club, I hadn't heard about the sensitive topic of murder. You dare to kill? Aren't you afraid of the police knocking on your door? Murder is a big deal, your wealthy husband can't bail you out of that comma, I probed cautiously, attempting to stall for time. Jenny's reaction revealed that she may have even killed someone. An eerie chill ran down my spine at the implications. Jenny smugly chortled, retorting disdainfully, just one murder, feed the body to the dogs, and no evidence is left behind. Let the police investigate. Her demeanor was intimidating. Staring at her seductive yet sinister face, I couldn't help but shudder. With a wry smile, I replied, a real outlaw. Jenny, satisfied, motioned, hand him the phone, surely, he won't dare call the cops. One guard picked up my dirty phone from the ground, stained with a black oily substance. Releasing my restrained hands beside me, one guard stood imposingly, exuding authority. Inattentive to their presence, I seized the phone, powering it on. Jenny impatiently instructed, watch him delete the pictures, beware of backups, comma, under the intense scrutiny of the two vigilant faces, I couldn't do much else. After a delay, Jenny grew impatient and snarled, are you deleting or not? Feigning ignorance, I stalled, I forgot which app it's stored in. Jenny raised an eyebrow, realizing my ploy. Are you stalling for help? Instantly vigilant, she refused to hear more. Another minute of delay, and a finger goes. Her words signaled the guards to brandish two long knives, the sharp blades gleaming under the light. Terror gripped me as I stared at the blade, involuntarily swallowing hard. Delete it, don't make a move. Under their watchful eyes, I deleted the videos from my phone gallery. Next, I accessed the cloud storage, removing the automatic backups of the videos and images. Suddenly, Jenny remembered, did you back up the phone contents on your computer? I pondered the repercussions as Jenny's gaze turned icy. You foolishly stored data on your computer. Silence him. Dread crept in as her eyes grew colder, suggesting an ominous turn of events. She was about to leave when she turned back, adding, Before you kill him, chop off his fingers one by one, comma, I want to make sure he never dares to meddle again. The chillingly cold voice pierced my ears, emanating cruelty. The two burly men, clearly experienced, prepared a blade while restraining my hand to expose my palm forcefully. I stared fixedly at the departing figure, hanging on the verge of uttering the words that hovered in my mind, beads of sweat forming on my forehead due to tension. One massive droplet slid down to my fingertips, 
the icy touch foreboding the impending severing. The blade hovered high above my finger, ready to slash at any moment. Distracted, I glanced again at Jenny about to exit, my heart racing in an urgent drumbeat, threatening to burst through my chest. Fast. Just as the blade was about to drop, a thunderous noise echoed from the exit, comma, a massive beam of light flooded in, illuminating the majority of the underground chamber. Police, hands up. This life-saving phrase gripped my faltering heart. I breathed deeply, collapsing to the ground, feeling relieved and exhausted. They had finally arrived. The entire scheme was unveiled. The police, not as swift and astute as expected, yet managed to locate me within a few hours and arrive in time. This coordinated effort between me and the police, planned when seeking revenge on Jenny, involved a friend from the police station who uncovered unsettling details about Jenny's criminal ties, potentially linked to several prostitution cases. A sudden breakthrough prompted swift police intervention. Setting me as the bait, we devised a plan to reveal Jenny's hideout. Expecting her retaliation after the humiliation, we intended to arrest her at her lair, dismantling her criminal network. Although prepared for this turn of events, the swift reality caught us unawares. Once the suspicious van appeared, I sensed trouble and alerted my police friend, sharing my phone's location. The sudden traffic jam was orchestrated by the police to buy me time to escape. Despite being forewarned, I couldn't anticipate the home ambush. Their direct vigilance caught me off guard. Upon noticing the location shift, the police detected the imminent danger and quickly dispatched forces to track the phone's position. Jenny's hideout was discreetly nested in a mall's underground fifth floor, complicating police apprehension due to the bustling surroundings. Thriving on the delicate lead, they cautiously explored the area, eventually discovering the dungeon. Just in time, as my finger was about to be severed. Rushed to the hospital, I was treated for numerous external injuries. However, as my dangerous infiltration was orchestrated to lure Jenny and aided by my timely distress signal, she was captured at her hideout. They ensured my VIP treatment at the hospital, pampering me in a deluxe solo suite, allowing me to recuperate leisurely. As for the aftermath of Jenny's case, my friend never mentioned it again. Sam, how's the case going? It took a while before Sam answered my call, sounding fatigued but also slightly jubilant, good job, pal. You've done a great service. As Sam described, I gained a real understanding of this woman. Jenny had been abandoned by her parents from a young age, sold into prostitution in exchange for money, shaping her into a callous individual. Forced into soliciting by her stepmother from a young age, her earnings were never spent on her, driving her to latch onto influential figures to escape her stepmother's control. Eventually, she married a wealthy man after several introductions, a man who amassed his fortune through illicit activities, including human trafficking and prostitution, eventually ascending to a position of power. This connection with her husband drew them together. Quickly after attaining wealth, Jenny eliminated her stepmother. As she claimed, she mutilated her stepmother, cutting off her lips and organs, forcing her to watch her own dismemberment. It was truly a scene that terrified her stepmother to death. She fed the dismembered remains to the guard dog that had protected their residence for over a decade. Just as smoking leads to addiction, so did murder. After her first killing, the subsequent murders became effortless. Their family gradually infiltrated the criminal underworld, embroiled in dirty dealings, where murder was normalized. Sam's account left me dumbfounded. Was she sentenced? I inquired mockingly, to which Sam cynically chuckled, of course, she's beyond redemption, comma, I later visited the jail, gaining insight into Jenny's deplorable state before her execution. Despite her youthful appearance, the toll was evident, revealing her aged countenance and the burden of experience. 
The once scornful gaze now bore resignation instead of mockery. Jenny gave me a brief glance, seemingly disinclined to speak. Sitting across from her, the poetic injustice of life was stark. Has the verdict been announced? I inquired, prompting Jenny's cold smirk, must you ask when you already know? With a scathing remark, if you're here to mock me, you can leave, comma, growing weary of her impatience, I shifted the conversation, do you regret it? Jenny's nonchalant response highlighted numerous regrets, leaving her remorseless facade intact. I clenched my fists, barely containing my fury. You destroyed my family. The feud between us stemmed back to Lisa. Without her interference, our familial bonds wouldn't have fractured. She seemed to ponder the matter before nonchalantly claiming, I've forgotten, comma, when mentioning the affair involving the black man and Lisa, she connected the dots, feigning indifference. She couldn't control herself, what's that got to do with me? Her twisted smile and unsettling attitude hinted at her disturbed mental state. Seeing Jenny's maniacal laughter behind the glass, my anger dissipated. The answer to my lingering question had finally emerged. Jenny faced the consequences she deserved, and I found my closure. The shattered marriage with Lisa was not solely Jenny's doing, it was primarily rooted in Lisa's flaws. Regardless of Jenny's involvement, Lisa's infidelity was inevitable. Walking out of the detention center, the gentle sunlight warmed my skin, bringing a sense of tranquility.